Hi, this is Ben Trill, and today I'm explaining Welsh counties in the Welsh language. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hey, hit that now. Getting familiar with place names is a great way to get familiar with a language. Now, I'll put an English translation in white on the bottom, but I'm just mainly going to focus on the Welsh language names. There are 22 of these counties, so I need to get started in this video. Let's jump right in. Sida Flint is probably the most complicated one, so I want to get this out of the way. So we're doing it first. Now, Flint probably comes from two different sources, and we don't know which, frankly. We're not entirely sure about where the name for Sida Flint comes from. Flint is the big part for that. Here's what I think happened. You have Llindinos, which was along the estuary here. And this was abbreviated by the Welsh over time to Llind. Now in the English here, at the time was Norman French, that would have been Flind, and they translated it. We do know that it was for a time Le Chaillou or Le Caillou, the word in French for gravel. Now gravel and flint are not the same thing, but the land there is quite hard and there's bits of rock. So at some point, the French was translated back into English, which had been mistaken from Welsh, or it could be any number of those, and we don't know. In any case, it's a flint. So you have a trilingual English, French, Welsh thing going on here, which is really confusing. We don't know which one's correct. The next one, Rexum. Now this is, it appears at first hand to be Saxon. Now, Saxon's not English. I said that in my video on Greek is a different language. But here's what it was. It was this word, and I'll try and pronounce it with Welsh phonetics. Which, if you saw that written down in Welsh, that's what you might pronounce it as if you didn't know any English. And that's really quite similar to what Wrexham sounds like today. So what we have in Wrexham is a Saxon word that the Welsh didn't know how to pronounce. And it became its own place name over time as a fusion between these two cultures. What this means is this guy's meadow, this field in the bend of a river. The ham bit is an enclosure, a meadow. The first bit's the guy's name. I, I still can't pronounce it, it's Saxon. Rethel's meadow. Powys is the biggest county in Wales, and it's really lowly populated. There are two possible elements here, and the first one obviously comes from Latin for provincial countryside. Pagensis. That W-Y-S does denote a people in Welsh. So what we have is Pau, Wys, the people of the countryside. Sir Conway, not Sir Conway. Notice that. Notice that as we move forward. Conway. This is where I live and this is my county. Conway literally means the chief river. It comes from Con and Gwy. The G drops off when it's attached to the word Con and it's the big river basically. Conway was navigable up to seven miles inland for quite a long time and it's a big river, it's the biggest in the area, so it's the chief river. Sir Thinbech is quite easy. That Sir at the beginning is feminine and it causes a mutation at that beginning of the word Dinbech, which becomes Thinbech, two Ds out of that one D. And you see that across the board, except for Sir Conway, like we just saw. Dinbech literally means small fort. Din and Bech. Now, Bech was the word for small at one time. We tend to use Bach now. You can also say Bechan for more, usually a feminine thing. But Dinbech, the little fort. Unis Mon. The word Unis is the word for island in Welsh. That part's easy. Mon is a bit different. We don't know what it means exactly. We know when the Romans came, this word was in use. 
the Romans called it Mona. So at this point, it was already a deep religious center and there was a battle to kill off that religion there. So there was a deep significance to the name Mon. And that's why I hope that you will not use the English version and For many people, it's quite demeaning to their deep culture and how old the word Mon is. It's important we use Onus Mon because we don't actually know what it means that's how old this word is. You have prehistoric burial chambers there from the Neolithic era. I'm not saying it's that old, but it could be. The island of Mom. Gwynedd is another one that's quite old, so that we don't have an exact word that it comes from, but the E at the end, the E double D, appears to be a plural ending, and the Gwyn at the beginning, it has been mistakenly considered to be something to do with white or blessed, which Gwyn is the word for white, but it's actually connected more towards an Irish word, Fianna, which is a roving warrior band. The word Gwynedd means a confederation of warring tribes, so this represents a people who came together from different factions in order to fight wars together. Gwynedd Cerdigion comes from the son of Cynetha, the king who founded a dynasty after coming down to Wales from southern Scotland in the 5th century, Cynetha's son Cerdig went down into Cerdigion along the basin of the river Tavy and conquered the land, we believe. And the O-N ending indicates that it belonged to him, that he was lord over that land. You also get an interesting note that I want to put into this video. Cerdigion can mean people who are loving supporters of something. Cerdigion Ariaith loving supporters of the language. Caradig's land. Sir Bembro. You get that change of letter after the word Sir again. It's Pembro, not Bembro, that it comes from. And Pen and Bro are two distinct words, and you get another mutation on the Bro, which becomes a Vro sound. So Sir Bembro, there are two mutations there. Pen means head or the end of a headland. Bro, in the olden times, it meant a realm, kind of a, a kingdom in a way. But today, it's changed meaning in a way. And I want you to be aware of the difference. Bro is a, a local area of community or culture. I tend to think of it as how far can you walk and it be the same community of cultural identity in which you live. In any case, bro is a very specific term to a local area. And pembro means the area that is at the headland, the farthest extent. And pembro, Sir Pembro, is the farthest west you can go in our country before you reach the sea. So it is the headland realm. The headland realm. Sir Garvirden has that mutation again. Garvirden literally comes from the Kair, the stronghold of Mirden. Now, people have wrongly assumed that Mirden is connected to the wizard Merlin here. And that's quite silly, frankly, because this is a Roman settlement built on top of something probably older. What we have here is Mir, an older word meaning seas or waters. And Din, as we saw in Dinbech, Mirden, the seas of the fort, or in this case, Kar Mirden means the stronghold of the fort upon the waters. The stronghold of the fort upon the waters. Abertawe. This one is composed of Aber and Tawe. Aber means estuary. It does have some other meanings in some other contexts, but here it means the opening of a river unto the sea. Tawe is common with other river-based words, and it means 
still and deep moving in this tense. Sometimes it connotates a bit of darkness as well. So what we have here is the river mouth of the dark, deep flowing river. The river mouth of the deep, dark flowing river. Castellnev means Neath Castle in English, but it's just called Neath. But what it means actually, the Castell bit means castle, but Nev is a bit older. It's actually pre-Roman as well. And what it means is shining and bright. It's the name of the river nearby, where it runs through. And it literally means shining bright. So Castell Nev literally means the castle of the shimmering river. The castle of the bright river. Penabont Arogur. This one's quite easy, frankly. Penabont, there's that word pen again. It means the end of, and with a bont, the end of the bridge. Penabont, the bridge end. Arogur means on, ar, and ogur is the name of the river. Penabont Arogur, the end of the bridge on the river Ogur which is where the settlement grew up, the opposite end of the bridge. Bromorganug is composed of Bro and Morganug. Morganug was an early Welsh kingdom, and this comes from the name Morgant or Morgan, with Ug denoting the territory of. And you add Bro at the beginning, and this literally means the realm of the territory of the King Morgant. And that T may be there in faintness because the two ends denote that there was probably a T there at one time. The realm of the territory of the King Morgant. Cardiv is Wales's capital. And there's that word Caer again, meaning stronghold or a fort. And Deed is the older version of the river Tav. So you have that mutation there. Tav became Dav and Dav became Div and Div became Div and you get a bunch of changes in there. But literally, it's the stronghold upon the river Tav. And the Romans built a stronghold there. Ronda Kanan Tav is composed of three different elements. It is an authority, uh, a county which is compressed different authorities together in a municipal sense. But let's look at the word. What does this mean, Ronda Kanan Tav? Well, Tav is the river Tav. Kunon is the valley Kunon, where the river Kunon is. And Kunon has the same origin as what we saw in Conway in the north, the chief river in that valley. Ronda, however, is a bit different. It literally means the good spear. And this may be tied to a, a myth of a shining mythical spear held by a chieftain locally. But that myth has been pretty much lost. We don't know exactly. We just know that Ronda means the good spear. We don't know because it's quite old. Merthyr Tidville is quite interesting because Merthyr today means martyr. But back in the 5th century, Merthyr meant a shrine, usually that you built around someone or a religious person that had passed away. And Tidville was a woman. She was the 23rd daughter of King Brechan. He had a few wives. And the Saxons came in and they were, well, pagan barbarians, and they killed her. And where she was slain, they built a merthyr, what is called a bedrod today, a, a shrine. This is before the word merthyr changed meaning. So it's the shrine of the Saint Tidville. The shrine of a martyr. A small shrine was built for her and around this grew the settlement known as Merthyr Tidville. The shrine of the martyr Tidville. Caerphilly has that Caer element. Philly, we don't know exactly. He could be a local saint in the region or he could be a local warrior chieftain. We don't know. In any case, it's his stronghold. The stronghold or the fortress of Philly. Casnewith is, it brings together that element of Castec that we saw earlier with Kastech Nev and shortens it to Kas. And Newid literally means the word new. It's a new castle. Kas Newid, a new castle. Because when the Normans came in, they built some new castles. Moving north from Kas Newid, you have Torvan. And this used to be the name of the river, a flow of water that was the breaker of stone.
bones. Quite a gushing river. And you get a lot of these rivers in that area that really gush down from what's called Brechenyog. <laughs> The mountains above. It's a fast moving river. The breaker of stones, Tor Vine, it comes from Tor to break and mine or stone. Blina Gwent literally means the Blina of Gwent. Now, what are these two? Blina is from Blin. That's the that's forward, that's prominent. And Blina, the plural of it, literally means the uplands, the highland bits. And Gwent was the kingdom of Gwent, which covered much of the southeast of the country. So Blana Gwent means the uplands of the kingdom of Gwent. Sirvanwe, you get that changing of the first letter after Sir, which after Sir, which means county, and Munwe changes to Vanwe. Munwe literally means quick swift water and it's kind of similar to what we saw in Torvan and that this area of Wales has a lot of swift flowing rivers quick flowing water Munwe. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to hit a like for me or leave a comment, I'd be happy to talk with you about any questions that you have below. Thank you for watching.